Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Talk Here with Dr. Laz, your favorite health program on television. Reaching you from Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. My name is Dr. Laz Eze. Yes, you could see I dressed in, a, in an interesting way today. Um, October is still World Cancer Month, uh, World Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, NGOs, government institutions, uh, as well as you know, Union of International Cancer Control and all stakeholders, including uh, cancer survivors, usually use this month uh, to create awareness on breast cancer, not just breast cancer, but other forms of cancer. So my dressing today is just depicting different colors that is used uh, to, for cancer advocacy. The orange color usually for leukemia and kidney cancer. Uh, of course, uh, this color, you say blue or, you know, uh, blue for prostate cancer, you have different shades of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to uh, go through them uh, much later, but I just want you to know that uh, according to the World Cancer Registry, uh, Global Can Cancer Registry, Nigeria has every year ho over 115,000 cases of cancer. And out of that, most times over 80%, don't get to make it, you know, they, they get to lose their lives to it. This is largely because uh, cancer in Nigeria is usually diagnosed very late. So late diagnosis makes the prognosis uh, very bad, makes the treatment very much expensive, and also the survival rates very low. Of course, uh, five-year prevalence is uh, around 211,000. Uh, and that shows that if you have uh, over 115,000 cases every year, in five years, you should be expecting uh, over 580,000 uh, uh, cases, you know. So that means that out of that number, it's just about, you know, 20% of them that might still be around, not completely cured, but perhaps still undergoing various forms of treatment. So this is not good at all. Uh, because Nigeria, in terms of cancer prevalence, doesn't have one of the highest in the world. But in terms of cancer-related deaths, we have one of the highest, if not the highest, in the whole world. So um, I had interviews and talks with a number of uh, cancer survivors uh, on this program in the past, and also a number of advocates and experts who are working in the cancer space. So right now, uh, we're going to use this program to do some kind of flashback because a number of issues we discussed are still very much uh, useful even till date. Nigeria has made some kind of progress in, in, in related to cancer advocacy, cancer care and all of that. But despite that uh, progress that we made in the last decade, largely due to activities of uh, non-governmental organizations, cancer survivors, and as well as institutions and all of that, you know. So uh, there is still a whole lot more to do as it relates to early detection and prompt and effective treatment. I'll just take a very short break. When I return, uh, I'm going to uh, take you through some of these colors that are used for cancer care, talk a bit about cancer prevention, general preventive measures, especially for breast cancer, then you get to hear those interviews. We'll be right back after the break. Health Agenda 2023. The Nigerian health system is becoming weaker with the mass exodus of medical doctors, nurses, and other skilled health workers out of the country. In February and March 2023, Nigerians will go to the polls to elect the next president and state governors, respectively. This provides an opportunity for the election of leaders who will help to strengthen the health sector and reposition it to deliver quality healthcare services at all levels. We present to you Health Agenda 2023, an interview segment on this program for presidential and governorship candidates to discuss their health agenda before the electorates. For sponsorship and participation, reach out through any of the contact details displayed on your screen. Welcome back to Talk Here with Dr. Lars, your favorite health program on television, reaching you from Nigeria's capital city. Yes, October every year is usually commemorated around the world as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. 
Uh, in Nigeria, uh, like I mentioned, we've made some good progress as relates to cancer advocacy, but so much more left to be done. As we speak, there are less than five functional radiotherapy machines in the entire country taking care of over uh, you know, 100,000 cancer patients. Not good enough. Nigeria needs not less than 200 of such. That means at least, as you mean, uh, one per one million persons in the population. So uh, we just have less than five. They usually break down due to large pressure. So the problem of cancer you know, is, is just very many, apart from the fact that not many uh, health facilities have the capacity to diagnose it, and not all that have the capacity to diagnose can offer the treatment, and not everyone who get diagnosed have enough money to treat, but even those that have money to treat themselves struggle to get those treatment because the health facilities where you can get it treated here in Nigeria, like the National Hospital, like uh, Luth, the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority, uh, Luth Cancer Center in Lagos, uh, UNTH in Enugu, and all of that, uh, different hospitals across the country, UCAG Bado. Those places usually have regular breakdown of equipment, sometimes CT scans, sometimes with the therapy mesh, and you have long queue of persons who have money to get treated but unable to get it. Also, the federal government of Nigeria uh, you know, approved a cancer health fund, which between uh, over a three-year period, over a billion naira has been appropriated by the National Assembly and also approved and certain monies released. But information we usually get uh, from cancer patients is that bureaucratic bottlenecks do not enable them to access this money in quick time. In fact, the Senate Committee Chairman on Health, Senator Olori Egbe, had to raise alarm uh, you know, earlier in the year before the Federal Ministry of Health through the National Cancer Control Program was even able to start disbursing monies that were already you know, uh, released by the Federal Ministry of Finance. Usually when advocates ask questions about this money to some officials of the Federal Ministry of, Federal Ministry of Health, I beg your pardon, they get defensive and sometimes respond very angrily. But uh, they need to know that that money is meant for the Nigerian people and cancer is enough trauma on its own, both the physical, mental and every aspect of care. They should not put any kind of measure that will cause more pains and perhaps cause further delay that could you know, allow the cancer to progress and cause complications that are usually much more difficult to treat or even to survive from. So I'll, I'll play those interviews. Let me quickly uh, we project it on the screen, some of the colors, just for the advocates in the cancer space. Uh, look at your screen and check out these colors that are used for uh, cancer awareness advocacy. So for uh, amber color for appendix cancer, uh, bladder cancer has blue, uh, marigold, marigold and purple. Okay, but let me focus on the popular, more popular ones. Breast cancer is pink. Blue for colon cancer, uh, gold for childhood cancer, leukemia and kidney cancer is uh, uh, orange, you know, just like the one I'm putting on. Um, you have uh, teal, pink, and blue for thyroid cancer. Stomach cancer is periwinkle, hmm, interesting. Uh, sarcoma, sarcoma is a type of bone cancer, is yellow, and you have it uh, all over the place. Uh, childhood cancer is gold and uh, endometrial cancer is peach, uh, liver cancer is emerald, and uh, green is gallbladder cancer. So, so many of them out there just uh, for you to get to know. So when you see different colors during cancer walk or cancer matches and all of that, uh, just get to know that they represent different types of cancer. So it's not only pink. You may see pink more often because breast cancer is uh, the most commonly diagnosed cancer in Nigeria. So most times during the work, you get to see that. So here are these interviews from cancer uh, survivors and later uh, from some advocates and all of that, that we end the program after that. Do stay with us. 2010, in June, I... Um, I was having my bath and I had, uh, I felt 
a lump on my breast. And I was like, what was this? Mm. Okay, actually, it started in 2009. But um, December, and I went to hospital for that, and um, I did biopsy. And they took it for a test, and they discovered it was benign, that it wasn't cancerous. And I was happy. Mm. But uh, six months later, I felt another lump at the same place. Even though I didn't know it was a lump, because I kept on believing that it may be the scar from the former mm -hmm. surgery I did at that particular place. So but when I felt it wasn't really getting smaller as, I, as it ought to be, I had to call the doctor, and the doctor asked me to come to the hospital, which I did. Another surgery was done, and then mm. when the result came out, it was cancerous. So and you had uh, two tests done on mm. the same lump? No, on different, the second, I, they did it on the first lump, then later, when the second lump came. On the same breast? On the same breast. Okay, so first so time they said it was benign. It was benign, Second yes. time. And now found it was malignant. malignant. Yes. Okay. So uh, when you saw, uh, got the news, <laughs> what what you was know, it like? It it was like um, my life stopped. Mm. You know, I just I just couldn't think further. In, initially, you were having hopes, aspirations, mm -hmm. plans for the future. All of a sudden, you are told you have cancer. And I remember the first thing I asked the doctor after the first shock was, Doctor, how long do I have to live? Mm. And the doctor asked me, who told you you're going to die? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and within me, I felt, oh, the doctor is simply trying to tell me that to calm me down. Yes. So I didn't take anything he said. My mind was closed to everything. Mm. I just felt that it was almost the end. I was, I was like waiting for the worst. I also noticed a lump on my left breast and um, I was asked to go remove it, which I did. Although I, I never know what, knew what cancer, I mean, what lump it was. And uh, I went to the hospital, I had a surgery. I removed the lump and um, the doctor advised I should go for a histology, which I did. So the test came out to show that it was cancerous? Yes, the test came out to be cancerous. So uh, you found that, I, I wouldn't ask you again how you felt because <laughs> <laughs> the, the feeling is, is usually similar. So well, you, you got it treated. Where was your own treatment you gonna? Okay, I did my own treatment in National Hospital and that was in that was last year and I started June thirteenth, mm -hmm. two thousand nine. So you've completed the treatment? Yes I have. Okay. And you're very fine, right? Uh, of that. course anyone that sees you know that <laughs> you're 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 very okay. Um uh, Gloria back to you. Um you were also treated in Nigeria or outside the country? I was treated in Nigeria, <laughs> National <laughs> Hospital to be precise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you know, a, a lot of Nigerians think that cancer treatments can only be done outside, successfully outside the country. You could see two persons who are treated here in Nigeria, and of course there are so many other persons who are treated and they are fine, but not everyone wants to come to the media to, to talk about it. I ask you about your assessment of cancer care in Nigeria, generally speaking, the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, Gloria, let me hear your <laughs> take on that. Okay, uh, let me say, um, I'll, I'll talk from personal experience, mm -hmm. then I'll also talk from general experience because um, I, I look at myself as <laughs> a special and miraculous case because throughout my treatment, there was no strike. Okay. Throughout my treatment, there was no breakdown of machine. So it mm. was like my treatment went seamlessly. Okay, that's, that's, that's fine. Your own treatment also went uh, very well. It right? went very well. But during radiotherapy, 
there was a breakdown. A breakdown of nation? Yes. Okay, got fixed. Got, uh, yeah, I got fixed and I continued after a week. Okay. Okay, so um, in 2017, I found out I, I had cancer. Mm -hmm. So I went for mastectomy. Mastectomy is the removal of the Yes, mouth? yes. No, of the breast. The breast, yes. okay. So I had the single mastectomy and after that the doctors advised that I do chemotherapy and radiotherapy. But I didn't want to do it because firstly I wasn't working at the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how I was going to put those bills. And then I have so many stories of people dying from chemotherapy. So I cancelled that option. And um, I just went on living my life and in 2018 I had a recurrence. And when I had that recurrence, I, my aunt, who was also battling with cancer at the mm. time, had gone for herbal treatment somewhere in Jos. So she suggested I should follow her. And she looked like she was doing well. So I was encouraged. I followed her to the place and I started my treatments. Mm -hmm. yeah, so they did the surgery for me. Right there at the herbal place? Yes. They do surgery at, at the herbal place yes, as well? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Sounds interesting. Yeah, you'd be surprised. They do. <laughs> After surgery, then they will give you all kinds of herbs to apply on the wound, which is usually left open, cover the plaster, you keep treating it, and then you take, you drink some. So you got better after the herbal treatment? No, I continued with them for two months, and then um, until my aunt died. Oh, sorry from about that. Yes, her cancer had spread, and so when she died, it was like a wake up call for me. I realized I've been playing my life. Oh. So I, I quickly went back to the hospital and told them I was ready to do chemotherapy. And so they asked me for the lump I removed. I told them we do the chemotherapy. Mm. So, but they used my other diagnosis and... And, and, com and continue the treatment. Yeah. So you're done with the treatment? Yes, yes. I'm done okay. The issue of uh, cancer in Nigeria is quite enormous and taxing, especially in terms of uh, the financial implication uh, and also the uh, infrastructure med uh, medical wise. Uh, going through this treatment is a, is, a, is, a, is a huge journey and I find that within the cost, the financial cost is within 10.5 million to treat a cancer patient for a period of one year. And uh, the drugs that we, she took was Herceptin and Dositacel, uh, which was quite huge and taxing, even for me as a caregiver. Uh, but I was fortunate that my organization came in to take uh, a huge part of the financial burden. However, the issue of radiotherapy is also another uh, Herculean tax we encountered during the journey. Uh, we have to travel out to Nairobi to get this treatment and the cost of, uh, at the cost of uh, 3.5 million. So you find out that it's quite challenging to a lot of people and a lot of homes that if there is no financial support or intervention from either voluntary organizations, NGOs or CBOs, uh, such patients could likely uh, not go through it as time is also of essence in the treatment of this disease. We call on organizations to really support the cost of this uh, uh, treatment, especially in Nigeria where uh, insurance does not cover most of the drugs. Uh, we believe that with your kind support uh, from various uh, uh, organizations, individuals and uh, uh, well-meaning people in the country, we'll be able to eradicate this disease. What has been your organization's response towards cancer control in Nigeria? Okay, as I said, mm -hmm. uh, Nigeria has uh, continues to have the worst cancer statistics in Africa, mm. uh, can, uh, cancer death statistics in Africa. And all this is actually driven by late detection of cancer. So the action of my NGO has always been focused on debulking the tumor and getting these patients earlier to the, uh, to the hospitals in order to improve uh, survival statistics. And how have we been doing that? We've been doing that through mass action. 
We've worked with the NYC from 2009 to date, and we've been able to reach 27 states through their CDS program. The target was to hit the 36 states of the country and reach the 774 local governments. But due to funding constraints, we were unable to do that. Now in, uh, in Enugu uh, this year, we've instituted an action and mobilized 500 women, training them to become uh, women cancer advocates to move with us and also school clubs, uh, cancer control school clubs in secondary schools and working with 34 different gender-based, non-gender-based organizations and professional groups mm. together, all hands on deck, create a mass action that should be able to reach the 17 local governments of Enugu State in the next one year. Okay. So, you know, riding up on what we have been doing nationwide, but focusing on the state to use it as a template to read Nigeria of late detection of cancer, one state at a time. From your end, uh what is impact that uh, you've made or you've contributed to making in the cancer space in the last couple of decades? Uh, um, thank you very much. For our organization, we've been around um, for less than two decades. So, but during that period of time, we've um, been creating awareness since 2015 um, through seminars and um, information dissemination online as well, as well as um, uh, talking to women in the marketplace to create awareness um, within our locality when we were in a clinic, a clinic in Isolo, and um, now our clinic in Surulere, we go to Surulere and Mushi, local governments and environs to create awareness. And we've also been screening, we screened um, a thousand women last year for breast and- Were those um, screenings for cancer, free? Um, screenings. And then through, through that screening, we, we were able to um, get cases earlier than they would have done if they hadn't come for the screening. And also the, the other thing, which is our, our NGO is focused on treatment, treatment, giving um, holistic treatment to patients. And we we've, we've moved forward in that, in that our patients, when they come to us, we ensure that not only are we looking after their body, we're looking after their minds oh. financially, um, so that uh, to make the burden that is um, that they ha come with a lot, a lot lighter. Okay. So over the past five years, we've we've worked on um, treating patients. We have a program for financing okay. patients, and then we also we have a counselling. But by that, and, uh, do you support patients on funding, well or do you treat well them free? So well being. So that's what we, we have done in terms of pushing the needle and we've seen the results um, in people actually having um, been caught early and people being treated for precancerous um, cervical lesions. Health Agenda 2023. The Nigerian health system is becoming weaker with the mass exodus of medical doctors, nurses, and other skilled health workers out of the country. In February and March 2023, Nigerians will go to the polls to elect the next president and state governors, respectively. This provides an opportunity for the election of leaders who will help to strengthen the health sector and reposition it to deliver quality healthcare services at all levels. We present to you Health Agenda 2023, an interview segment on this program for presidential and governorship candidates to discuss their health agenda before the electorates. For sponsorship and participation, reach out through any of the contact details displayed on your screen. Thank you very much uh, for staying with us and watching the program up to this point. It's still Breast Cancer Awareness Month. There's so much to do in the cancer space. You may ask, how do you prevent cancer? General well-being, you know, healthy food, exercise, and all of that, annual checks, body checks, going to health professionals when you have any challenge, you know, no tobacco smoking, don't take tobacco at all, it's one substance that causes uh, cancer a lot, you know, and early detection, cancer affects every part of the body from head to toe, except the non-living part like the hair and the nails. So uh, if you detect early, like doing self-breast examination or mammography for those who can afford it, or pap smear for cervical cancer screening and all of that, 
detect early, please, it can be treated and is curable when detected early. Cancer prevention begins with all of us. So see you same station, same time next week. Bye for now.